Yeah, wouldn't you know it, I forgot to delete the old videos off this cheapo Fire tablet, and it ran out of memory. So, part two of the study guide review picks up right where we left off now at question number 25. Which of the following is not a property of covalent substances? Well, covalent substances are soft, low melting and boiling point, don't conduct electricity, and they tend to be liquids and gases at room temperature. So which of the following is a property of them? Soft. Oh, not a property. Oops, my fault. Am I going to start over? Heck no. Not would be high. Soft is one of the properties. Don't conduct in low boiling points. Those are all properties. B is the answer for that. All right, moving on to 26. Considering that Lewis structure, what are we going to describe this as? A substance that contains all oh, this is polarity. So let's take a look at polarity. Phosphorus is 21, or no, 21, 2.1. And chlorine is a 3.0. For an electronegativity difference of 0.9. That makes polar bonds. So automatically eliminate those two. We know it's got polar bonds, now we just gotta figure out if it's a polar molecule. Lower number is positive, higher number is negative. If you can draw a straight line, put all the negatives on one side, the positives on the other, it is a polar molecule, so that brings it down to A. 27. When bonding with a halogen like fluorine, carbon is capable of forming what? Well, to answer this question, we have to look at Lewis structures. Carbon's got four valence electrons, which means four single dots. Carbon can make four bonds. Halogens like fluorine have seven valence electrons. It can only make one. So again, Carbon can make up the four bonds, but fluorine can only make one. That is going to limit us to nothing but single bonds. <clears throat> we could do the whole Lewis structure and everything if we wanted to. To confirm that, There you got it. Everything's a single bomb. <clears throat> Running the hell playing in time here. Let's get booking. Next question, same kind of question this time. It's nitrogen and carbon. So carbon, again, four dots can make four bonds. Nitrogen has three dots. That means that we can make a single bond with carbon. We could make a double bond with a carbon, or we could go all the way up to the triple. It can make a mix of single, double, and triple bonds, depending on what else it has to bond with. Your limiting factor is never going to be carbon. Carbon can make four bonds no matter what. Your limiting factor is going to be what it bonds with. And um, if it's binary, then it's going to not work, because carbon also have an extra electron there. We need something like hydrogen over there to pick it up. But it can make up to three bonds, so it can do single doubles or triples when nitrogen is concerned. It just depends on what else is there to bond with. It wouldn't be binary, but it could go all the way to triple. Which of the following formulas is an empirical and molecular? Empirical means reduced. Molecular means covalent. So it has to be a covalent substance. That means no metals. It has to be a compound, so that can't have an element in there. It comes down to those two. Two nonmetals, so that's covalent, that's a molecular formula. Two nonmetals, that's covalent, so that's a molecular formula. But this one is four and eight, that is not reduced. That one is two to one. That is both an empirical and a molecular formula. It's reduced and it is a covalent bonded molecule. Gas is going to be C. Particles far apart. Strongest intermolecular forces are in a solid. A, 
Again, strongest, middle, weakest, none at all, actually. Strongest, weaker, none at all. Best way to think about it. To go from B to C, to go from liquid to a gas, we have to remove intermolecular forces. A. When you melt something, you weaken them. When you boil something, you remove them. A to B, that's melting. So again, we would weaken them. They're strongest in a solid, weaker in a liquid, non-existent in a gas. Liquid at room temperature, this is about intermolecular force. Uh, we want to recognize that there's three types in covalent substances. There's hydrogen bonding, which would happen here with nitrogens and hydrogens. So that would be hydrogen bonding. There are dispersion forces, which would happen in elements and nonpolar substances. Um, carbon dioxide is nonpolar, so that would be dispersion forces. Remember, even though they're polar bonds, it's a linear structure, so there's no separation of charge. And PCl3 would just be plain old polar because you do have separation of charge. We looked at that one already on the test. So that would be dipole-dipole. Hydrogen bonding tends to have the highest melting and boiling points, so it's the one that's most likely to be a liquid at room temperature. Weakest intermolecular forces, again, we're looking at these three things once more. F2, we know that's going to be dispersion forces. H2O, hydrogen-oxygen bonds, and we know it's polar. That is going to be hydrogen bonding. SI2. is bent. Sulfur acts just like oxygen, iodine acts just like hydrogen, so it's a bent molecule just like water is. Sulfur is a 2.5, iodine is a 2.5, so these are nonpolar bonds. So this has got dispersion forces. And then CH4, I should have probably labeled this one, this question differently. It's a tetrahedron because it's a five atom molecule. Carbon and hydrogen bonds are polar bonds, but no, actually they're not. They're only 0.4. So these aren't polar bonds at all. So those are dispersion forces again. So it could be any of those things, really. Um, I'm going to say F2 because it's an element. And the electronegativity difference is, is zero in that, as it is here. But yeah, I should have probably said strongest here. And if I said strongest, that would have been hydrogen bonding. Oops. Last two questions, mole ratio problems. We're going from oxygen to iron three oxide. Oxygen to that. Three moles of oxygen equals two moles of iron three oxide. Start with a given, 3.5 moles, and that's oxygen. Set this up so oxygen cancels. And do your math. 3.5 times 2 divided by 3. Let me grab my calculator here. So I always like to make sure I give you the right answer. 3.5 times 2 is 7. Divided by 3 is 2.3. So B is the answer. Same kind of setup for the second one. But this time we've got iron and we want to know oxygen. So iron and oxygen. Four moles of iron equals three moles of oxygen. We're starting with 1.5 moles of iron. Set up so the iron cancels. The three moles of oxygen on top. Well, how many times have we done this? 1.5 times three, that's 4.5. Divided by 4 is 1.125. So easy answer. All right. That's it. Loads of fun. You'll all ace it because you're all geniuses. I got faith in you. You have faith in you.